What's up, everybody? Carl Erickson here. I want to talk about the casting process. 3,300 submissions, which is pretty uh, uh, amazing. It's pretty amazing. One of the questions that keeps popping up that I thought was interesting, apparently a lot of you want to know, is as the writer and the director and the person doing the casting, what is it that I'm looking for that's different than what a casting director is looking for? Short answer, <laughs> I have no clue because I've never hired a casting director before. So I don't know what the etiquette is. I don't know what the process is. I'm not really sure what they do. I do have people guiding me through my experience, which I am very grateful for, but I am still going about it the, the Carl way for right or for wrong. So first off, do you match the character that I'm looking for, the description? If you don't, that's cool too. I think that's always a great idea to apply for something that you don't necessarily fit the description of. But I do think that you should send in your cover letter why. If I have a family and you do not fit at all the description of the crazy uncle, tell me why and, and, and maybe how I can include you, you know, in, in this movie. Because I'm all for telling the best story that I possibly can. And if you have an idea that will make one of my characters stronger, more interesting, why wouldn't I listen? I'd be a fool. But if you're just going to submit and you don't match my character's description, I'm just going to assume that you saw the age and you were like, oh, I fit that age. Let me apply to it. Okay, so it's 2024. Come on. I'm, I don't know anybody without a phone and it has a camera on it. Get some light. <laughs> Get out in the sun and take a photo of yourself that I can see. A grainy out of focus, super dark photo does me no good. And it's showing me that you're not even doing the, the smallest amount of work to make yourself appealing to the project, right? So I wrote the screenplay and I love it, right? I'm putting a lot of time and money into the production. Why would I ever take the risk on an actor who isn't going to do any kind of basic work? On the other end, if you have a headshot that doesn't look anything like you. That is so annoying. To be going through someone's reel and I'm trying to figure out who exactly it is that I'm supposed to be watching because none of the people on the screen look like that headshot. Don't make the person casting do more work than they have to do. With that said, also have a reel. You have to have something. Do a monologue. I'm doing a narrative film. So if you don't have anything where you're talking what good does that do me? I don't know if you understand where dialogue comes from. If you really understand what a human is, I don't know that you know that. If you're up there singing, I'm not doing a musical. If you're up there lip syncing to a song and it's from TikTok, uh, I'm not really sure what that is supposed to do for me. If you are doing those recreations, you know, those, those ghost stories where someone's talking and they have you know, people moving in the background in slow motion and that background person is you. I don't know if you know how to deliver dialogue. I, I don't know that. Give me a monologue. That's what I need. I need to know that you understand and you do the homework for the character. And it, it could be anything. It could be a, a scene from your favorite movie. I would rather watch you butcher <laughs> one of my favorite scenes than not have any idea what you do. And I would hire an editor to edit your reel together. I don't want to watch a five-minute movie and look for you acting. I, I don't want that. I don't want to see a one minute scene where half of that time is spent looking at another character. We're here to see you. Show us you. Cover letters. I really didn't think it was going to be that important to me. It turns out that is really important to me. And some people went above and beyond. They, you know, they, they, they talked about me. So they, they did research on who I was. And then we're like, hey, you know, I noticed that you did this, this, and this. And it's like, okay, that's great because it's you're going to be, I'm, I'm, I'm hiring you. You're going to be working for me. Don't you want to know who you're working for? I could be the biggest piece of shit. You, maybe if you do a little bit of research, you can find that out ahead of time. Because I know a lot of local directors here that, <laughs> who are real big pieces of shit. Um, and you don't want to be involved in those productions, right? So I think that's great that you do a little bit of research. And not only that, people are talking about my past films. That's important because now you know where I'm coming from, 
right? You kind of know, have an idea of what my sense of humor is like or my approach or, or you know, what I like to do with the camera. Those, those things are important. I think it's awesome that you've done that research. Now, you don't have to go to that extent. But on the other hand, if you write me a cover letter and you just say, hey, I'm applying for your film. Just put me wherever you think I fit in. You're not obviously not serious about this. And then some people say, I, I, I can really add value to your project. What value are you bringing to me? What do you know about the characters? How do you identify with the characters? In what way are you associated? You know, like if you're applying for that crazy uncle, are you that crazy uncle? Do you have that crazy uncle? Like, what value are you actually bringing to me? Um, to just say I'm bringing value, it, it, it's, it's nothing. Um, so I, I think that is, is, is stuff to consider. So I hope that helps, gives you a little bit of insight of like what my process is. And I'm sure it's very similar to other independent uh, directors. But any other questions, just ask. Thanks.